Ah. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, YouTube Live. My name is Nancy, and today we're going to be talking about the Lyran Starseed Personality Traits. Super excited to be sharing this one with you as um, I've been doing this series about star seed personality traits uh, to let you know those star seeds are being awakened from their dormant state into their active state because here on the face of the planet for humanity and nature, our frequency is going much higher and for us to be able to maintain that high frequency, understand the high knowledge of the frequency, um, many of our star seeds that maybe have been dormant are becoming more activated. So <clears throat> love to have you checking in this morning. I am drinking some lemon honey tea. I am on my eighth week of uh, having my hoarse voice. So uh, I am hoping that that will resolve itself. My spirit keeps telling me that I need to have about three days of ultimate silence, no talking. Yeah, trying to figure out where I'm going to put that one in. So let's just jump in. And um, I'm really excited to welcome all of you from all around the world who are joining in today. And uh, so I have already talked about Syrians. I've talked about Orions. We've talked about Pleiadians. And we are talking about Lyrans. There are many, many, over 30 different kind of galactic families out there of, of different qualities of star beings or star people, as the indigenous uh, people like to call them. But these are the main ones, the main four that I see uh, on a regular basis uh, in the spirit world. However, the Lyrans I've noticed started coming in pretty strongly about three years ago. So they're really here. I would call them leaders of ascension. They are one of the leaders of ascension. So, all right. So let's talk about these qualities and see if any of it kind of rings a bell for you. And um, what I will say is probably for most of you, it's going to ring a bell just a little bit because as I was kind of looking out using my clairvoyance, my psychic ability to kind of look through the world, um, what I asked to see was uh, how many of us have that Lyran star seed and many, very few don't have it. Some may just have like, I don't know, 1% and some may have 80%. So we'll see. Uh, where you are falling in. So happy Thanksgiving to many of you here in the United States. It is our Thanksgiving holiday, although I do want to acknowledge that um, it can be a painful remembrance for some people. So I tend to like to call it family day. But uh, yes, here in the United States, uh, we will be gathering in our families. So let's talk about our families of light, the star people, and of the qualities of our ancestors that uh, may have come from the stars that we draw upon for our own current day-to-day -day living. So many may have heard of the lion goddess Sekhmet from Egypt. So I invite you to go to Dr. Google, look up about Sekhmet, the lion goddess, which would have been uh, a, a very high level Lyran star seed qualities. However, a lot of people tend to think that the Lyrans are associated with Egyptians and uh, they are wanting to be very clear with me that that is just one uh, culture that they came through at that time, that they have come through many, many cultures. So, We'll talk a little bit more about that, too. Hello from Ireland and from Dallas. Everybody's so excited this morning. So I will tell you that the Lyrans woke me up at exactly 3.30 this morning. They were over my bed when I opened my eyes, and they're looking at me like, is it time to talk about us yet? <laughs> and uh, so I said, could I get at least another hour of sleep? And there was no way that was happening. Okay. <clears throat> 
I am wearing a kind of copper golden color. So most of the Lyrans that, uh, that from their kind of ancient, ancient beginnings were very amber in color or copper in color. However, we will see Lyrans, Lyrans in white, like the white lion, for example. You'll definitely see that golden kind of amber color in our current Lyrans. But you can also see the Lyrans in um, blue, that current blue that's coming through, the cobalt um, uh, lapis blue that you will see them, and uh, emerald green. So that kind of surprised me to see them in emerald green as well. Uh, but there's a reason for that. And the reason is because they were displaced from their home, who knows, millions of years ago and wherever they ended up relocating, which is going to be the theme about the nature of Lyrans. Uh, but wherever they ended up lo um, relocating, they ended up taking on the frequency, light and color of those areas that they relocated to. Um, spiritual awareness. So Lyrans <clears throat> are often believed to have a heightened sense of spirituality, strong connection to the metaphysical realm. So if you have, uh, feel quite drawn to the metaphysical realm, then you may have a little bit of Lyran in you. Although many of the star seed beings are really interested in metaphysics, but this is what is significant about the Lyrans is they love alchemy. They Alchemy is where, you know, you could take metals and melt them down and turn them into gold. So you could transform or uh, this kind of metamorphic ability to take one shape and completely transform it into another shape or another thing. This is a very high quality for the Lyrans. So if you like to see change, you like to see movement all the time, you will probably have those star seed qualities. You're not much of a uh, fan of stagnant or stuckness if you have Lyran qualities. And so again, you're gonna have a variation of how much influence you have of the Lyrans in your DNA. So you might see a little bit or you might see a lot in this. Lyrans absolutely love earth because of the critic of incredible aspects and wonderment of nature but not just because of how nature makes you feel, how beautiful nature is, although the Lyrans really appreciate all that. They love to observe and learn from the ancient wisdom of nature. Like how does a tree know to grow? How does a seed know to get activated? In what conditions do some seeds get activated and others don't? Like for example, that there's a seed that the only way it can get activated to start growing is if there is a forest fire. So the Lyrans are very curious about uh, what makes nature tick. But this is the other thing. Well, Lyrans like any like to understand anything that um, ticks. So like they have a high level of curiosity, but not just for curiosity's sake. They want to draw out the ancient wisdom so they can use it to help people. So back to the Lyrans. Lyrans love humanity. Lyrans love how humans think. Uh, they have a curiosity about the different personalities of uh, different people, what makes them make the decisions that they make so that they can draw upon the wisdom again to add it back into what will help uplift humanity. And they're even curious about um, like, what was I going to say? Like sociopathic or I don't know what some of the words are, narcissistic, uh, all of those types of personalities, highly, highly curious. And they will embed themselves in those environments to be surrounded by narcissist or sociopathic psychopathic personalities or power abusers 
not because they're broken or something's wrong with them. They want to study them. So if there are any of you out there that get like, what is wrong with me that I'm surrounding myself with narcissist? You might have high quality Lyran star seed because you want to learn from that so you can gather that knowledge to help uh, make the world a better place. Okay. Um, let's see. I want to say Lyrans consider it life-saving to understand more. Oh, the Lyrans consider it uh, life-saving qualities to understand the nature of humanity and confrontational human nature so that they can shift humanity into a greater sense of wanting to and understanding each other. Okay. And this might surprise you about Lyrans. It most certainly surprised me when they told me this. They tend to be in politics, military, and high-level businesses. They are very strong leaders. They have very strong leadership qualities. Um, I call them the unsung heroes. They kind of smiled at that. As they use their finesse as leaders to move people through telepathy, making those people think it's their idea. That's why I call them the unsung heroes. How many of you have uh, really made a difference in a company or made a difference, you know, in the military or as a, a therapist or in politics, and yet you never get the credit for it, or even in other aspects, you never get the credit for it. Somebody else will take the credit. But most of the time, it's because you have helped move them in that position. Because a lot, I say you, you, as if I'm, already speaking to all of you Lyrans out there, uh, Lyrans tend to kind of be, I don't know if I'd call them wallflowers because it's not like they're inert and they're not doing anything, but they tend to stay in the background. They tend to want to work with alchemy. They want to work with people. And it's like, okay, this person is going to go together really well with this person to make this outcome. So that's why they make such good leaders. It's almost like a chessboard where they know which uh, piece to move to get that checkmate, to get the best outcome. But it's always, always in that healthy state of Lyrans, it's always to better and uplift humanity. Um, also tend to take on leadership roles in federal, state, and local agencies to assist people to move back into their strengths. So it might be, um, <clears throat> oh, what am I calling it? Like the foster care system or the child care system or helping adults go back to school to get educated so they can get a good job to support their families. So they'll tend to be in big leadership roles there, especially right now, because we are moving from this kind of Capricornian state to this Aquarian freedom state. And it's uh, Capricorn is top down authority and Aquarian is bottom up authority. I happen to be Aquarius Capricorn. So I've got that, that going on both sides. Lyrans do the same in many ways is that they want to uplift. And even if they choose to be in those positions of higher power, it's always for the purpose of moving that company um, from one state to another that will ultimately want to help uplift people. So there was, um, I don't know, I was listening to the show, I was listening to this speaker. I was listening to this woman who uh, had been hired by this company to market these really high-end baby strollers for uh, new families. They're like the Cadillac of all strollers. And so she moved to do this marketing. But where she came from was like 10 years at, I don't even know, it would have been like at Apple or it would have been like at Microsoft or something, like a really high-end company. And so I thought, so why did she move? What would cause her to want to move to be the head of marketing with this startup uh, stroller company. Now, just what I thought, that's how a, how a Lyran thinks. A Lyran wants to know 
why did she move? What compelled her to move? And it was to help families and to help this startup business. So, so that attachment to power or being in that power position wasn't as important as coming into that company to help uplift. Lyrans will tend to move from company to company. Once they get that company moving, they kind of get, they want to move to another company or another type of business, or maybe get educated in another um, type of interest so that they can always keep the energy moving. Um, I had asked because I always think of the Holy Spirit as a moving energy, very creative, very moving energy. And they said, yeah, it's very similar to that, but much stronger, much more powerful. So why do many Lyrans join the military? That blew my mind. Does that blow your mind? That blew my mind. And what they said was, because remember, they're going to infiltrate. <laughs> oh, my God. They're going to infiltrate areas to uplift and, and create better outcomes. So they said, think about it, Nancy, in the military, most soldiers wish to protect their country. They have fierce patriotism. They want to make the world a better place. They don't want to uh, create wars and hurt and harm people. Ultimately, they just want to help keep their country safe and people safe. So they will move into those military positions to see if they can help participate in avoiding war and avoiding conflict. And the reason why is that they know what war and conflict is like. So they were explaining to me that First of all, Lyrans are some of the, if not the most ancient, ancient star beings in the universe and in all the galaxies. <clears throat> and they were very non-confrontational because they drew upon their wisdom to make decisions. It's the same with Lyran star seed qualities. You will draw upon your wisdom to help you make decisions. Now, what happened was what they were explaining was, is that they were trying to kind of mediate and, and try to understand and work with another uh, galactic culture that used conflict to resolve issues. And uh, so the Lyrans said that they, uh, they kept trying to work it out by talking and this other one tried to work it out by conflict. And next thing you know, they, there was an attempt to kind of destroy their civilization because they could be very passive and very quiet. And so this is why the Lyrans are here on earth because we are here doing during an enormous time of conflict. Now, what they are saying is that they're trying to understand what, what triggers that mindset to want to go to war, to always want to be in those states of conflict. So, Anyway, I found all that interesting. I could probably just talk about that one subject for a long time. <clears throat> as long as they feel like they can make a difference, they will remain in one place. Uh, but I already said, once the business is open and flowing, they will tend to move on to a place to make a difference. Home. Lyrans tend, so if you have Lyran seed, you may not ever feel like you have a connection with home. So whether it's the home that you're living in, whether it's the city you're living in or the state that you're living in or the country that you're living in. So I asked the Lyrans, why is there never this kind of comfortable sense of home if you have a large amount of Lyran starseed qualities? And they said, because they lost their home, they lost their planet. And so they tended to uh, be adopted be integrated into uh, where they were like immigrants and the like a country that will take immigrants in. They were taken in. And in exchange, they are the high keepers of wisdom and knowledge. They would share their knowledge, their wisdom with these other star seed galactic families of light. And um, <clears throat> so they don't feel like they have a home. So if you have high quality starseed 
high quality. It's all high quality. That's all high quality. Uh, but you may never ever feel like you have that sense of home. But the other part about that is you always want people to feel comfortable no matter where they are. So you'll go out of your way to help people to be comfortable. And I will tell you, I come from a military family and that's very true for my family is that during any kind of holiday and things, it, it was, I remember growing up, there would be so many military soldiers that were away from their family that uh, were welcome at my family's table. So that's what that Lyra and Starcy will, they want to make help to make other people feel comfortable and at home, no matter what the situation is. Uh, they prefer to live in places where they can be surrounded by movers and shakers. People remember, Lyrans have no patience for stuck, stagnant, non-movement places. So they will tend to have to move away from there if it feels particularly stuck. Um, and when the energy, they want to be surrounded by people who are not afraid to move energy. Okay. Oh my goodness. I'm just on page one, you guys. Page one. Uh, Lyrans, this is something else that kind of surprised me. Lyrans tend to incarnate into adoptive families children, children who are adopted. So any of you out there who have been adopted by another family, you may find that you have high Lyra and star seed. So adopted into uh, children who are adopted or adopted into new families, cultures, wherever there's a sense of that feeling of being displaced and then someone else took you in and welcomed you. The Lyrans are, they want to be in that, that place of movement, of understanding that quality of feeling displaced and feeling welcomed because that's what happened. They were displaced um, and the Syrians were the biggest, biggest ones that really took them in. So they have a high connection to Syrians. That's why often you'll see them as blue. Uh, so Lyrans tend to incarnate into situations where also there's high levels of abuses of power. This surprised me. It surprised me so that they can learn to work with and understand those who abuse power. So they said, if you were born into a family where there was high level abuses of power, or maybe you had parents who were controlling, or you're in a marriage relationship where powers abuse or work situation that you uh, placed yourself, the, the Lyrans would place themselves in that position to learn and understand those who abuse the power so they can take that wisdom and knowledge and uh, put it back into the world to uplift and help humanity. Sensitivity highly sensitive to frequencies, emotions, and the environment around them. But you know how the Pleiadians, where we talked about their emotions and they're very emotional and they're very creative. And if they're not creating, they can get really stuck in their emotions. Yeah. Lyrans are not like that. Lyrans know how to manage their emotions. Uh, they're highly skilled at managing their emotional expression. Very hard to trigger. Can't really trigger them. They love to work with physical matter to move, shape it through the magical capacity of alchemy. Empathy, they have a large level of empathy and compassion. Again, they are not easily triggered by overcare and overconcern for others. And the reason why is because they know how strong you are. So any type of uh, victim or my life's never going well and bad things always happen to me. Yeah. Any kind of Lyran qual personality qualities will be like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Now, when are you going to put on the big girl pants and get your shoes on and move into your strength? So they're very much like that. Like you can do this. They don't have much patience <laughs> for anything else. Um, so they can seem like they're non-caring and it is the exact opposite. They inspire you, uh, to get stronger. And even if you have those Lyran star seeds in you, those star seeds that are getting activated, it's going to really help raise all of humanity to that place of tapping into our strength, 
okay? Uh, Lyra and seed qualities place themselves at the center to help move frequent, the frequency dial. So they're really good, um, even if that requires going into the belly of the beast. When they told me that, I was like, whoa. So they love to move energy into a better place. All right. I already told you <clears throat> about uh, leadership. So uh, high level leadership of those that desire to bring change in the world. They gave me the example of Gandhi, Nelson Mandela. The Dalai Lama, those are very high. They would have high level star seed Lyran qualities. And because the Lyrans, what they told me was when their, when their country was being destroyed or their planet was being destroyed, their people were being destroyed, they were the keepers of the most ancient wisdom of the creation of the entire universe. So they took that incredible wisdom inside of them and that's like their hot commodity. That's, that's their quality that they share with others, not so freely and not so easily. You have to prove that you are ready for that higher level of wisdom. Uh, but those, all of those, Gandhi, Nelson Mandela, the Dalai Lama, they believe that every human being on the planet has the capacity to rise in their nature to better humanity all the way around. So that's the truth of the qualities of the wisdom. Okay. I just told you about wisdom keepers, starseed leaders, great wisdom. They told me they do not have much patience. They, this is the thing about Lyran. So how many of you know what's going to, what the outcome is going to be before it happens? And sometimes you know what the outcome is going to be like years before it happens. And then you just have to sit and wait and wait, and wait until we catch up to like, whoa, I get it now. <laughs> so that would be a Lyran starseed, beautiful starseed quality, not the impatience, but that quality of holding the belief until we can grow into it. They're really, really good at that. So if you have that impatience, just know that's your job. <laughs> it's your job to hold that belief for humanity until humanity can step into it. Uh, they have a, a strong intuitive sense, trust their inner guidance because they tap into um, that wisdom they are very creative. They love to be surrounded by art. They love to be surrounded by beauty. And they love that creative process of artists. Um, so, oh, and then the last thing. Okay, I'm doing good because we're going to do a little meditation after this. The thing I got super excited about was they said, there are many, many Lyran star seeds being activated in the new children that are born at this time. So that they said uh, in the next 20 years, when these children are adults in their 20s and 30s and maybe into the mid 40s. So any of those children born in this range have high Lyran star seed qualities of leadership because we're moving into this new way of living and we need leaders who have that capacity to hold that vision for us moving forward so yeah yeah you're very welcome jackie for that information i love the reason why i loved it so much is because they were really easy for me to communicate with and um, because what they said was that they seeded Atlantis, they seeded Lemuria. Uh, it's almost like they gave Atlantis and Lemuria a wisdom data bank to create this new world. So we are kind of like that new world where the Lyrans are sharing that wisdom, ancient wisdom data bank with us to move forward. And again, they're saying we would not even be where we are right now at this moment in time if we weren't ready. So they're very proud of how ready we are. And I will just, you're going to hear me say one more thing, one more thing, one more thing. What I've been told before is 
is that before they gave the high level wisdom and knowledge at the top, hoping that once they had that wisdom and knowledge at the top, that they would make sure that everybody got it. That didn't happen in both of those situations. So this time they are infusing a lot and coming in from the bottom up because they'll know that people will remember what it's like to struggle, suffer, be abused by abuse of power, and then they will help um, uplift it. So hopefully we have a higher chance of success this time. So I'm going to do the same meditation that I did the other time so that you can get a chance to experience the Lyrans, the Lyran energy. Um, they don't always look like lions. So just to let you know, it depends on who they were adopted by. So those who are adopted, <clears throat> yeah, get excited because you've got you've got some high level wisdom and knowledge you're carrying inside of you. All right, you ready? All right, go ahead and uh, we're just gonna do five minutes. So go ahead and close your eyes. And remember, I always, spirit always says, when you close your eyes, your own spirit can teach you. So right now your eyes are closed, your spirit's moving into position to help teach you. But before that, let's thank our bodies who are really taking it on the chin uh, with all the rapid changes that are happening. So let's just send a little love and gratitude to those beautiful bodies of ours. Let's work with a little bit of that amber today, that amber frequency. If that amber color and frequency is not comfortable for you, then go ahead and switch to a blue or a pearly white or um, that emerald green. Yeah, because those are some other color frequencies that the Lyrans work with. So let's just go ahead and call in that amber golden amber frequency and bring it in call it into the room where you are to begin flowing through the top of your aura through the top of your head it is this beautiful elixir of high frequency wisdom and knowledge Allow it to flow all the way down through your body and, and let your body and your energy field just drink in what you are comfortable with. It may activate your memory of uh, your lion, lyran qualities. Flow all the way down through you down your arms, down your legs, all the way down, down, down to the center of the earth with this little thicker elixir. Or your girl saying like honey, it's like, yep, it might not be as thick as honey, but it definitely has a thickness to it. Let it flow all the way down through the earth, Remembering how much Lyrans love the alchemy of Earth. Once you get to the magnetic core, the center of the earth, just let it pour around completely encircling the magnetic core to assist you to drain, let go and release any impatience or abuse of power. Just 
any energy that may interfere with your ability to remember that you you are super strong. You have a lot of strength. And you may not feel like you know where your home is, but know that wherever your soul is, wherever your heart is, that's where your home is. All right, now let's use those incredible imaginations using playfulness, lightheartedness, light-mindedness, and allow yourself to imagine you're walking along a path in nature. That nature for you can be a desert, it can be a jungle, it can be like here in the Pacific Northwest, you know, evergreen trees can be a beach, sandy beach with palm trees, snow-capped mountains. And then you are going to experience a doorway ahead of you. And on the doorway, it's going to say, Lyrens. And when you're ready, go ahead and open that door and just stand in the light that is um, radiating out through that opening so that you can experience the fullness of those ancient, ancient, ancient Lyran qualities. You can stand in the, the door frame if you wish. You can even step over into it uh, to experience it even stronger. And we'll just take a minute of silence as your spirit helps teach you about the qualities of Lyra's. All right, go ahead and step back into the door frame or back on this side. Um, I can see that a couple of you went pretty far out there. So you want to come back uh, this side. You can go back and visit any time you want. You can wave and, and thank them as you go to close the door, which is a portal that you're closing. You always, when you open a portal, you always want to close the portal. So someone else doesn't just fall through it by accident. And then once you close it, you know, you can just touch that heart of yours and just head back down the pathway until you come back into the room where you are now
Wow, that's a beautiful, warm energy. Whenever you're ready, you can go ahead and open your eyes and just remind yourself of today's date. Remind yourself of your current age. Remind yourself of where you're living, because especially with Lyrans, don't always know where their home is. Uh, and yeah, remind yourself of yeah, what city you're living in if you're struggling to come back a little bit. So remember as a Lyran, if you wonder why you're not happy, like we can equate moving around a lot and we can equate moving jobs or homes or um, feeling unsettled wherever we are, that it's not because you're anything's wrong with you. It's not because you're unhappy. It's just part of the qualities of moving, you move, you're moving energy everywhere that you go. So just one more thing. Um, we have at Intuitive Mind, we had no plans to open Psychic Mastery One enrollment, no plans at all until 2024. Um, we have been uh, convinced to change our mind by over a hundred of you who wrote in and said, could you please, 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 uh, let us into your Psychic Mastery One program. We will have the link here. You can check it out. It's over $400 savings. We're really taking advantage of the Cyber Week, taking advantage of Black Friday uh, sales. Um, what do you call it? Internet. It's called the Internet. Anyway, it is a, a program that uses the Internet, and it's a virtual program. So anyway, you can read much more about it there. I encourage you to check it out because we're going to keep that those open enrollment doors open until, I think, next Tuesday. I don't know what the date is. I'm sorry. I can't track all that's going on right now. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for popping on this morning. It was a lot of fun. And I would love to know what percentage of Lyran do you think you are? How much of it made sense to you? And remember, you can be a blend of Pleiadian, Orion, Syrian, and Lyrans and more. So you can have a little bit of all. All right. We'll chat next Thursday. And remember, we have the big blue surge, our third one coming through Mesa 3. So if you want to be more of a part of that, you can join my mailing list. It'll say join mailing list on my Intuitive Mind website. And uh, we'll be sending out more information or the Blue Light Movement page on Facebook. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Have an awesome, awesome day and week.